Hi everyone, welcome back. It's been a little bit. We've been, it's been a couple of weeks. We've been doing some traveling and whatnot, um, but we're back. And of course, just in time to have our podcast "Oh for Dying Out Loud" on the day before Halloween or Samhain, uh, depending on or you know Day of the Dead, All Souls Day is coming up. So it's all about dead. It's all about the dead and our ancestors right now. And so. We're taking a little bit more of a lighthearted approach uh, today. Um, I'm your host, the magical life midwife, Angie Cat, And joining me today, as always, is the divine death doula, Laura Shaw. Fabulous. Yeah, so good to see you, friend. So we thought we would talk about uh, our ghost experiences, spirit experiences, how we honor our dearly departed um challenges with that all of those things so let me just start Ms. laura uh have you had ghost experiences spirit experiences tell us i have i have um so my uh golden girl thinks i'm nuts but i have definitely had ghost experiences so mm-hmm. yeah how about you have you had them oh yeah oh yeah um yeah, it's uh it's interesting. I'll tell you my my very first one. Um I think this was my first one that I was really aware of. So I was um I was staying with a colleague slash friend of mine. Um I was a trainer for this company and I needed to go and train her on some new processes. So I was going to spend a couple of days with her and stay at her lovely home. And this woman had a, a three-year-old boy who was super sweet. I'll not say their names, you know, um, he's a grown adult now, but, um, so this three-year-old boy, she was telling me, um, about, uh, the, well, actually she didn't start telling me about this. She, no, she did tell me that they had a ghost in the house or spirit in the house and that her little boy would often talk to this spirit. And, you know, for example, he'd be playing by himself, no other siblings. And then just all of a sudden look up and go, my friend is here. Right. And first of all, what I loved is that she did not poo poo that. She did not tell her son that you're making stuff up. She encouraged him, whatever you're seeing, you're seeing, you know. Um, And um, so she just knew that this was his imaginary friend. But then she started telling me a few other stories, like um, they'll be all at the dining room table. And they're eating and her little boy had this toy upstairs in his bedroom. It was a little um, Sesame Street big bird that had the symbols uh, that clapped, but it was motion sensor. So when you clap in front of it, it would clap. So she said, we'd be all sitting down at the dining room table, including the little boy. And all of a sudden you hear upstairs that big bird is clapping and doing his little symbol thing. So they just, you know, knew that, well, yep, there's there's this ghost that is in the house with us and the little boy can see it. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I love ghost stories. Never had had an experience. Wasn't sure what I believed. I mean, I believed in them, but I didn't, you know, I didn't know how, um, what do I want to say, how prevalent they could be. Sure. So anyway, that night <clears throat> I am uh, sleeping in the little boy's room, actually, and I'm sleeping on the bottom bunk and the door was open uh, to the bedroom. And um, I kept hearing what sounded like somebody running up and down the hallway. Boom, 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 boom. And so I get up in kind of my sleep stupor and I go to the door, a doorway, and I look down the hallway and of course there's nothing there. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'm hearing stuff. So I go to close the door so that I can have peace and quiet. I didn't get the door latched before, boom, something hit the door and opened it, came flying open and there's nothing there. And so I just remember standing there going, okay, I'm going back to bed. (laughs) Like, I don't know what just happened. So I went back to bed and I'm like, we're just gonna, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the door just can't be closed. So I get up the next morning and I tell my friend this and she goes, oh, 
sorry, I should have told you that ghost doesn't like closed doors. And I'm like, yeah, that would have been helpful to know before mm -hmm. I tried closing the door. But anyway, so we continued our discussion about this because I was just fascinated by the fact that they just, it was a normal thing for them uh, that this ghost existed and the little boy could see him. And they discovered from the previous owners of that house, because they had a huge back lot, that there was this well way back on the back of their lot. And many, many years prior, a little boy had fallen into the well and drowned. And so they believe that that's who was coming around to visit. So, um, so that was my most profound ghost story, so to speak. Since I've been on the spiritual journey, I have had spirit messengers, like, you know, my grandfather shows up as a, a dove, uh, or, you know, my one grandfather loves to play with the lights. So if something's going wonky with the lights, it's usually him. Um, you know, or messages from songs and things like that. But in terms of, um, you know, seeing spirits or um, sensing them in my environment, not so much for me. Yeah. So that's, that's it for me. So, I mean, and I think part of it, you know, cause there's part of me that I'm like, oh, I would really, it would really be nice to like see some shape, you know, of like my grandparents or, you know, my loved ones who have passed or whatever. But I honestly think that they haven't shown up that way because they know I would be scared shitless. <laughs> I, <laughs> like go. initially I'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? So, cause I know people tell me and I believe them uh, I've had people that'll say, yeah, I, I see them with my eyes and I, I do not. Yeah. So do you, do you um, see them? Have you seen? I have on very rare occasions, twice in my life, uh, have seen something, but I don't know what it was. Um, my most significant, uh, story, let's say yeah. that it's of this. Cause it's like, yeah, I don't know. Um, right. I, for the first time in my life, so um, I, many, many years ago, um, I went on a vacation with some friends and my, at the time, 10-year-old daughter. So this was like 15 years ago almost. Um, and it was just the two of us with a, one person I knew, their children and their friends. <laughs> so okay. um, it was kind of a, but I had never, prior to that date, I had never traveled um, with anyone. I just traveled with myself. So I had no idea. I knew I needed a photo ID, but I didn't know how to get a kid on a plane. So okay. I packed her birth certificate because I thought I need right. to prove this as my kid and I'm not kidnapping her, but whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. That'd yeah. be helpful. Yep. So, um, so I packed it. I never needed it. Uh, and on, um, this trip as we, so we went, we were gone for a week. We, we fly back. Uh, as I'm unpacking, I cannot find her birth certificate. It's gone. And I thought oh, maybe someone at the hotel when they were cleaning the room saw it and, you know, people yeah. can sell, right. you know, whatever. I, I don't know, but it was right. gone. So um, I was a little concerned. Uh, of course. And, you know, I need to figure out how to get another one. Um, and at the time I lived in a rental house over, uh, across the street, oddly from my parents. Um, and, uh, it wasn't really big. It was just me and my kid, um, living there at the time, just the two of us. And, um, probably about a month and a half later, uh, we came home and on the floor at the bottom of the stairs was her birth certificate just laying on the ground, just there. Uh, so I cannot explain to you why that happened. I don't know right. where it came from. And I don't, right. I, like, I just don't know. I just don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so that wow. was probably one of the weirdest experiences uh so things like that happen a lot for me um where no we have absolutely looked for something we know it is not here we do not know what has happened to it and then it will appear in the most obvious place and I don't mean like your car keys I mean like a birth certificate <laughs> that was not right. on the floor right 
a wood floor with nothing else on <laughs> like um right yeah so yeah. uh so those kinds of things happened a lot in that particular space um or just weird kind of things would happen like that uh but always, yeah. always lovely and good mm -hmm. right um but I am also one of those people who, when I walk into a house, mm -hmm. I absolutely know mm -hmm. what I know if there's something there. Like, I think you can be tricked. Um, I, I definitely think that people will uh, go to a house and it smells great and you're not, you know, like whatever, like for a minute, it feels good and the windows are open and everything's great. But if... um. I'm definitely one of those human beings who, if I go up to a porch or if I go inside of a house for like in seconds, mm -hmm. it's instantaneous really that I will be like, no, no, this is uh, yeah. a house. So um, there's actually a house uh, in the community you live in uh, that um, I trick or treated uh, with my kids, my oldest kids. So this is probably 20 years ago. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, uh, it instantly, it was like, ah you just knew when you got like got close to it, it, it had a really heavy feeling. Um, and I didn't think much of it at the time other than mm, I, I don't want to know who lives there. Um, but many, many uh, times it would go for sale. So finally, as I'm looking for a house to buy myself, um, my first right. house, uh, the realtor that was a friend of my sister's and I said, is that house haunted? And he said, why do you ask that? And I'm like, cause it's always for, it goes up for sale, but it, it sells, it's back up for sale. Uh, and I go also, it just feels heavy when, when you're there. And he said, um, I've never seen it, but people tell me it is. So oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. to this day, that house still goes up on the market constantly. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. so uh, things like that, but mm -hmm. recently, like within the last year and a half, Mm -hmm. um, my, one of my children was looking to purchase a home and one of the houses that they looked at, I walked in and instantly knew really? they yeah. were there. somebody was there. Um, yeah. and I asked my sister if the person who lived, cause there was someone living there at the time. Uh, but yeah. the person who owned the house, I believe had already died. And she goes, I don't think he died here. And I'm like, he's here. He's absolutely here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm telling you. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it fell through. I'm glad it didn't work out. Like, uh, yeah. because the house they ended up in is lovely. Um, but also yeah. because that house, I think they would have had a lot of trouble with, but so I have experiences yeah. like that. Um, yeah, but I let am, me. I want to yeah. ask you more about that because here's the thing. So you know, this is delving into a little bit more of the paranormal activity, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's all uh, my philosophy, my opinion. It's all the spirit world, right? And I have not had experience with, you know, a paranormal activity other than my grandfather play, playing playing with the lights, yeah. right? You know, so nothing, nothing's flying off the shelves, you know, things are not, I don't hear screaming or whatever, like they portray in, in a lot of movies. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Right, right. But it's, it's challenging to me because, and, and maybe I don't know enough about it, but it's challenging for me because people will automatically assume that that's negative right? right like like you like you walk into the house and you go oh my god somebody is here mm -hmm. what's what is bad about that because according to other people mm -hmm. that i've that i've listened to or that I've, I've talked to it's really just that maybe this spirit after this person has passed or whatever it just is kind of lost and hasn't hasn't really um, found their way home, so to speak, right? Yeah. And and in ancient traditions, many tribal traditions, there are people that that's their job is to help, you know, yeah. through prayer or sacred ritual to help that spirit find their way back to yeah. source, right? Yeah. And then so, for some reason, some of these, what uh, there's lots of different terms, you know, they're earthbound spirits or whatever, that they're here and they're just kind of lost. <laughs> but I just, I have a really tough time believing that these spirits are there and bad, 
Sure. And that they might want to do harm because I just don't believe that the spirit world inherently is harmful or yeah. scary. Talk to me about your beliefs yeah. on that. Yeah. So um I agree that much like human beings, spirits, mm-hmm. because they are the energy of a human being, are typically good. Yeah. Uh however, uh mm-hmm. For me, Mm -hmm. I use the term heavy more than bad. Right, right, Um, right. yeah. So heavy for me, I I believe that if I walk into a house and it feels heavy, I do not want my kid and my grandbabies living there because I don't think that they Mm -hmm. would be equipped to handle that. Like, I agree. That's a good way of saying that. Yep. They're not Um, equipped to deal with it as many people like who aren't, they're not used to this kind of stuff that yes, they would probably be freaked out. Yeah. And even if, uh, one of the family members is equipped, I don't know that the rest would be, which is challenging. Uh, the the other piece of that is that in my experience with people, and with energy, mm-hmm. it is dual. So it there, I mm-hmm. I don't think that it's inherently bad, but right. sometimes the experience that I have have had tells me that there are times when people are confused or afraid, mm-hmm. and they will cling to what they believe is there. That's true. You're right. We are all, I mean, we're all of our experiences are filtered through the lens of our, you know, our beliefs and our, and our philosophies and that kind of thing. So, so if, so sometimes when people have been on their deathbed, which we've talked about before, the couple Mm -hmm. of experiences where people seemed afraid to let go, right. Seemed more about their it, their, their fear of what was there to greet them mm, as opposed to what right. really would have, like, I don't, I think you and I have talked about this before. I like you before I like, you do not believe that there's this hell that will open up and eat like whatever. That's just not my right. belief. Um, right. But I think that the fear that traps people uh, or right. their energy um, is real. And so yes. sometimes the heaviness of that fear Mm-hmm. maybe isn't something that like, I don't, I don't know that everyone can fe- be equipped for that. And sometimes right. I, it would take a very, um, like you right. said, there are people in certain tribes or pe- this is why people have mediums or um, they have right. a medicine person or mm-hmm. uh, different, right. different religions and beliefs that, that people come and, and kind of help things move on. I assume that that's the goal of everybody. So uh, most right. uh, most of the time, even if you n- know something is there or can feel something, it doesn't feel heavy, but it is that heavy. When you walk in right. something and it feels heavy, it's like, no, I don't know what's here. Right, right. What's happening here, but right. I don't want to be here. Right. Um, yeah. Well, and, you know, and interesting though, I wonder, I mean, so yes, to your point, I, I, I'm tracking with you and that, you know, that, that energy may be still there and that the fear, it's like a pair of glasses that we put on mm-hmm. and that's what we see. And so, um, and you and I've talked about this before about how a lot of the things we see in the world has been shaped by the books that we read, the mm-hmm. movies that we watch, these kinds of things. Right. And so, I wonder if when you walk into a house and you feel that heaviness and you go, mm, nope, there, <laughs> there's something's not right here. Yep. If yep. that yep. isn't partly your own glasses. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's interesting that you say that because at my home that I lived mm-hmm. in, uh, yeah. when that appeared, I absolutely knew something had happened. I don't know what, yeah. right. but it was not heavy. It was not right. like, right. And that, right. it did not phase me. It was like, this is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And Thank God you for returning the birth certificate. Yeah. No, I'm fine. And maybe yeah. it's because, maybe it was because the heaviness is like, I'm in a different environment and it, yes. and it is, you're, you are tuning. I'm not saying that it wouldn't be heavy. You may be tuning into the heaviness of 
that person's that person. life. Yes. Right. Yeah. That person's yeah. life and their experiences. I mean, we leave an energetic mm -hmm. fingerprint yes. on everything. I mean, there's such a thing as psychometry, yes. which is, you know, for those who may not know, you can do, you can get a read on someone by like asking for someone for their keys or lipstick or, or something that they've recently touched. It's going to have their energetic fingerprint on it. And you can, you know, a total stranger. I've done this in psychic development classes where you will grab that in your hand and you'll just sit with it and you can get psychic impressions about that person. Right. Um, you know, I mean, I, I had an experience where I was doing this exercise with the, uh, a woman and I didn't know her. It was the first time I ever met her and she gave me her keys and I held on to them and I immediately had a dark, heavy energy that I perceived mm -hmm. around her. But I, I told her, I said, I'm perceiving this dark, heavy energy, but I, I don't get the, I immediately get that it's benevolent. Right. And I okay. said, so what I'm getting from you, from this is that you are challenged with this energy. You know, this energy, it is someone who has passed. I'm getting that it's a parent that has passed that was not a good person to you in this lifetime. And that's the energy that I'm picking up from them is that that's, that's the shame and the guilt and, and everything that they're, that still kind of defines them. Um, but that they're now in the afterlife, you know, or whatever you want to call it, they're, they're still with you wanting to protect you because that's making up, they're trying to make up for mm -hmm. all of the, the ways that they've hurt you. And she immediately burst into tears and said, yes, that is my father. He was, uh, emotionally very abusive and, um, you know, I do sense him around me. And I do sense that he's been helping me. So, so anyway, so the, the whole energetic imprint, we leave that imprint. Like my parent, my grandparents house that we just sold. Okay. Mm -hmm. They've, they've been out of it for a year. And my grandfather passed in January of this year. And I go on to Zillow to, you know, cause I hadn't been back in a long time and go on to Zillow to just get one last look in these empty rooms and even in those photographs, I could get this psychic, emotional, energetic impression of the people who live there. I mean, granted, they're my family, so I already have my perceptions around that. But, um, but yeah, you can you can sort of get that um, feeling. And again, it doesn't necessarily mean um, it, it could be heavy, but it's not necessarily that it's heavy that that person is heavy. It's just the 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 energetic. Um, sort of dust that's left right. over after they're gone. Yeah. So, so let's shift gears for a minute then. Um, so talk, let's talk a little bit about how we can, again, I think this is beautiful because it helps us to, um, to kind of segue into how we honor the death process in such a sacred way that we're not we're not as afraid about the people who have passed or the spirits that might, you know, the energy that might still inhabit this place. How, how can we best honor our ancestors, not just during Sawin and or Samhain, and I never get that right, Samhain, uh, All Souls Day, you know, Day of the Dead. It's a day of celebration to celebrate our ancestors that have gone before. And it's a very light and happy celebratory thing right? that we do after they're gone. So there's, I feel like there's kind of this gap between that person's last moments and then moving to the afterlife that we can somehow bring some sacredness back so that it, it becomes this light and beautiful thing. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the things that, um, we have talked about before and what I would ask you is, do you believe that there is a space between when a person passes and their ability to communicate? Cause I think, I, I think you've mentioned before that people can oftentimes can just like your grandfather watched his funeral with you, mm -hmm. which is yeah. lovely by the way. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So 
Can there be a gap? What causes that gap? What do you think causes that gap if there is a gap? Um, well, when we talk about the gap, I think um, part of it is, so the short answer is uh, there's no gap. Okay, good. Like, you know, as soon as they have let go of their body, they're in spirit form and they are always with us. But I, I think that what you're talking about in that gap is, is that um, sometimes people feel or perceive that, oh, I, I, they're not communicating with me directly. Mm -hmm. There could be, I, I think it depends on what you've studied and what your philosophies are. Could it be that they're just getting oriented to, you know, being back with source and doing their life review? <laughs> there is some, some wonderful books out, uh, that talk about that where, you know, there's a, a hypnotherapist that did a lot of past life regressions and recorded all of them. And so many of them talked about, there's this life review that happens on the other side. <laughs> and what by a life review, ver, review, I mean, it is all good because at the very basic level, we are souls Mm -hmm. We are souls, first and foremost, and we choose to come into this human incarnation with the sole purpose of experiencing it all. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, um, why I have a tickle in my throat, my apologies. <laughs> so if our, ex if our goal is simply to experience it all, mm -hmm. you know, and, and some of it is bad or, or not as good then we go back and we go the life review is what did you learn i this is my favorite game to play in my entire life i do the same yeah. thing like right no, what do i what did i learn it's not did it cause pain yeah yes. did it cause pain for other people yes was it horrible in the moment yes did i experience lots of emotions about it yes mm -hmm. but ultimately there was something a gift that was gleaned from it because of the experience and the wisdom that you got from it. So, so there could be that, right. That there, maybe there's this gap of, okay, I'll come back and visit. Once I do my life review, I got to mm -hmm. get settled, do some paperwork up there, you know, check in whatever, you know? Um, but I think honestly, the other piece of that is, is that the grief is so near for many people that I think it would, I think that space is kind of necessary right. to go for, for the living that are left behind mm -hmm. to go take a breath and in this moment, just be with the sacredness that this beloved person has made their transition. I think it would be very hard um, and, and unless, you know, some of us, I know you've said that you've seen your, your grandmother walk out, you know, yep. and, and that kind of thing. And some people are in tune with that, that they can, they can see that and maybe communicate for a moment. But I think for most people, it would make the grief process harder because this person has now taken their last breath and now all of a sudden they're there, you sense them or they're communicating with you in some way there is this, oh, I want to hug, hang on to you, right? Like, come back. Yes. And I think that there's there's got to be a, a part where we just honor the space, right? Right. Even though they may still be right there, there's an honoring of that space. So that may be part of it. So it could be a number of different things, but ultimately, we've. T I think we've talked about this before. My belief, my philosophy is, is that there's no such thing as the veil. There's no such thing as the veil. There is, the spirit world is really kind of just superimposed upon this illusion of a world that we live in, right? We're in the matrix, you yes. know, right? So what we see with our limited senses, the spirit world is, is superimposed on that. And it's almost like if once we cultivate that ability, which we all have, right? Like I am really nothing special. I just practiced and done some teaching. Sorry. She's special. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. But, but my point is, is that everybody can learn to do this, to create, you know, it, and it's as simple as literally 
writing in your diary a letter to your to your loved ones. Mm -hmm. It is as simple as standing in your kitchen cooking and having a conversation with them in your head or out loud. The more that you cultivate that level of connection that you're continuing to reach out and make an effort to connect, they will connect with you in various ways, mm -hmm. right? And and it's almost like to me, it's kind of like when when I've done when I do mediumship or when I'm doing um, connecting with my loved ones, it is almost like I'm I'm sitting here and then I'm just kind of shifting my gaze to right right off to the side, you know, or just just above. And so it's really it's softening your gaze, and you may not see it with your eyes. Right. That's the other thing. These are limited senses. And so to think about the fact that once you're in the spirit world, it's energy and energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just continually changes. So right. the energy of my grandfather can move from the, the body that he had into the body of a dove. I absolutely believe that because it's energy, it's energy and it changes form. So I do believe that we can all connect. Um, I think that sometimes it has to do with am i open am i receptive am i grieving too much um am i and 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 why is that important like people would go well i'm grieving like that's when i want to see that person the grief process is vitally important vitally yeah. important for those emotions to move through your body and to be processed and the more that, you know, if, if your beloved would show up, like you are showing up to me right now, like I can see you flesh and bone and that kind of thing, it would just make it harder. Mm -hmm. It would just make it that much harder and drag it out. Um, so there's, there's this processing period for us, right. That has to happen. I think, um, before we start to. And I think I've talked about this too. I mean, again, you have to, you kind of have to suspend your limited belief about how it happens. Right. So I think I may have told you the story about, so I was at this retreat and this woman was talking about her best friend who had unfortunately died by suicide and, or no, not died by suicide, died by a, a terminal illness, mm -hmm. too young, obviously. And they had talked about, okay, when you're on the other side, what's our, what's the sign going to be that we agree on? And it was Nichols, Nichols, I'm going to send you Nichols. And so it had been a year since her friend had passed. And she had asked one of the panel speakers and said, you know, I, this was the thing where we, we made a deal. It was going to be Nichols. I've seen no Nichols. And it just breaks my heart that it's been a year and I've seen no nickels. And he wisely and intuitively said, what are your spiritual gifts? Like, are you claircognizant? Meaning you just know things, you think things. Are you clairvoyant? You see, are you clairaudient? Do you hear? She said, well, I'm claircognizant. You know, I, I, I get an image in my mind and, and I just know. And he said, so how many times a day do you think about nickels? And she was like, you know, did this one cocked her head a little bit? And he said, maybe that's the way that he's speaking to you, that every time you think of a nickel, you're thinking of him. And that's his way of communicating with you. So it may not be the tangible nickel. So and and so she just sort of had this epiphany that like, oh my God, he's been talking to me all this time, right? So my point is, is that it's you have to kind of get out of your own way if you want to have that communication with spirit is that it's not always going to show up the way you think it might be repeating numbers it might be um, a song that comes up on the radio with lyrics that seem to jump out at you it might be something that somebody says you know that they say something that your grandfather always used to say to you you know it's going to show up in a variety of ways so just to be open to that not push it, but just be, just be available. And again, just, you know, like I have pictures of my grandmothers that are on my altar. They're, they're uh, lovely pictures of when they were younger. And that's one of the ways that I honor them. You honor them by singing to them, by talking to them, by journaling to them, by saying to them, you know, when you're struggling, oh, I wish you were here. You know, my aunt uh, was, kind enough to gift me a um, teddy bear 
that was made out of my grandfather's shirt, you know? So every time I see that bear, I think of my grandfather and that's his way of, you know what I mean? So there's, there's so many ways, um, but that it, and it, it comes and goes, you know, I mean, they're not here. It, their job is not to be with us all the time. They got stuff to do their spirit, you know, they're, they're back in that spirit world. They are loving life. They are, you know, going through their lessons that they've learned. I do believe in reincarnation because again, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just changes form. So maybe they're gearing up for what's the next thing. I'm coming back as a cat. Pretty sure. <laughs> that's what I want to do. So a spoiled <laughs> lap cat. That's right. That mm -hmm. is right. So, so there's, and look, whoever's watching this video, you could be listening to this going, this is a bunch of bunk. And you may be right, because here's the bottom line reality is, these are the things that I've studied and believed and, and are informed by my experience. But all of us are just scratching the surface with what we know, because we won't know until we get there. We right. really truly won't know. But I do believe that there is no such thing as a horrible, fiery hell. I don't. I yeah, believe I that the that. spirit world is beautiful and that is where we are born from and that's where we return from and we do it over and over and over and over and over again. Um, I want to go back to mm -hmm. you had mentioned uh, the idea of ancestors and mm -hmm. the people who were here before us um, yeah. that helped create us to be where we are. So I have this like really significant love of my ancestors. I uh, wholeheartedly uh I love stories about them my family it I never met my biological grandfather died the year I was born or when my mom found out she was pregnant with me he died yeah. right around that time um yeah. if I have my dates correct it was before I was born that he passed just before and my her only brother died I think within a year or two of of me being born so there was just a lot of like she found out he had cancer when I, she was pregnant with me it was right. like Whole drama um right uh so i just but but even though i didn't know these folks i can tell you so much about them my family keeps everybody alive uh because we talk mm -hmm. about them all the time um i have very vivid memories of people who i have no business having memories of right um, because i can i just have these memories of them because yeah. they've just always been part of our life so um uh, so that's really important to me. So I went to a psychic in my life and um, I have never been one to believe much in psychics uh, in, in my past. This is kind of where it started. So I, I, that, I don't know her name and I wish I did. She was visiting Iowa. She is a um, little person from mm -hmm. Canada. Okay. And uh, this is such a specific thing I remember. Anyway, I didn't wear, yeah, I had yeah. an, an untraditional wedding ring at the time. Uh, and I am the whitest white person you've ever met. However, <laughs> I am, right? Like you can see through me. I'm so pasty. Right, right. Um, yeah. However, yeah. Uh, my mother's family, my mom's uh, biracial. Her dad was what was considered a throwback. He was darker than both of his parents. Very, very, very dark uh, man, mm -hmm. uh, black man. Um, and uh -huh. uh, she knew that uh and there was no way she could have known that so she right right how that happened was she said to me you know um there there are people with you and I'm like oh okay yeah and uh, again I didn't even write the check because I didn't want her to know anything about me um right but, uh so she she said yeah I see them uh, and she could identify that there was someone with me that was um, an extremely dark skinned man. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. And absolutely. Uh, she explained to me that he uh, she she would have guessed. I think she said Nigerian. Uh, and mm -hmm. I'll be doggone if um, when my mom finally did her DNA test test she was very close to the region of Africa that my mother's family uh generates yeah. from so uh Africa is yeah. very large so it was very uh right. yeah right. but she was like mm, almost and I wish I knew her name because I would love to tell her how close she was uh, right I mean, clearly that right. clearly she saw him uh yeah so that kind of changed my perception a little bit because it was something that yeah. 
at the time, the person I went with didn't know that about me. Um, The people I worked with, it was two ladies that I worked with. They didn't know that about me. And there's no way that that could have been a guess with my white now, but blondish and blue eyes. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, So I a hundred percent believe that our ancestors are always here uh, helping us if we will accept it in whatever way. Um, yes. And in the Polynesian tradition, Mm -hmm. they talk a lot about ancestors, um, Mm -hmm. and about the knowing that we have, that we all have that just comes into us. Uh, they call it an amakua and it's just the great knowing or the, the thing that we just Mm -hmm. all know. And we don't know how we know, but we just know. And I always have attributed that to, um, my ancestors knowledge just coming through me I think a lot of native traditions uh have the same sort of ideas um and I think in my experiences what I have noted is that as people are dying or as they're heading into the end of their life people who believe this have a much lower resistance and happier ending uh, it yeah. seems if right. they have this sort of connection where it's right, it is honored and revered and uh, yeah. that your family is always there for you and you're always. Yeah, and I, I believe that. Yeah, uh, your family of origin. That makes total sense, though. I mean, if you think about, again, Day of the Dead traditions, you know, All Souls Day, uh, you know, Sawin. Yeah. And why can't I say Samhain? I, I, I know it. you can say it either way, but uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> but those really, it's really traditions that honor our ancestors and right. keep them alive, to keep their mm-hmm. traditions alive. And so this kind of speaks to the idea of, and it's not just one day a year. I mean, right. you know, we... Many of us do keep our ancestors alive by, you know, we make grandma's you know, special recipe at Thanksgiving. We Mm -hmm. have the old recipes in her handwriting. We have grandma's teacups. We have grandpa's, you know, plaid shirt or whatever. We have pictures. We go through pictures and everything. And so it's, I think it's really important to continue to, to reminisce about those things and about that person. Um, It's not unnecessarily keeping them alive. It's, it's keeping their memory and their impact on your life alive Mm -hmm. and it's you know we've talked before about we've come upon a few people who their families are really oh quit talking about them they're gone Mm -hmm. no pictures put them away right we've and there's look there's no we're not here to tell you how to think neither one of us are here to tell you what to believe but certainly there's long-standing traditions over thousands of years that honor our dead and our ancestors because they do have an energetic imprint on us. Mm-hmm. They are the ones that pass this wisdom down. And, and if we want to have a more sacred and real relationship with our beloveds, not just in our living life, but when they transition, it's only going to translate to a much more sacred death transition for ourselves, I believe. That you know, sense. like if I can, if I can be, if I can honor someone and not be afraid. I mean, look, I've never sat with someone who is actually dying. Mm-hmm. There's a little fear in that. Like, what do I expect? What can I do? You know, am I going to feel helpless? Am I going to say the right things? What's it going to be like for them? Are they going to be in pain? All of the things that, you know, that does inform, you know, a little bit of my fear, but I hope to continue to learn from this so that I can be with my loved ones at their last moment, because I do believe that that has a direct impact, uh, you know, on my life and how I live it. I, I, I remember another medium that was at that retreat that I went to that said, We are in our lives healing seven generations ahead of us and we are healing seven generations behind us. So Mm -hmm. this idea that we are 
individuals, we are islands, we have no connection. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. Because of the energy that we are, we are all one. All great religions talk about this. All great spiritual traditions talk about this. So if we are all one loving energy, why wouldn't you want to honor that in your past loved ones? We do it for our pets. Yes. Right? We, I'm, I've got the shrine, you know, uh, for the cats, you know? And so, and I will still talk about them. We do this. We talked about little tiny deaths before in another session too, about how everything in our life could, you know, we have the old job, we have the old relationships and this kind of thing. Sometimes we go through our grieving process, which includes some anger uh, sometimes, right? Just, Just a little bit. And, but yet I will still catch myself talking about previous relationships, previous jobs. Why? Because there were things that I learned from them. So I don't necessarily need to keep rehashing it. I'm not trying to keep those things alive necessarily, but I am honoring those experiences because every experience is holy. Right. And I've learned something from it and I have connected to another person from it. And ultimately we are all connected, right? So no matter how much I might want to in the moment uh, demonize my exes, they 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 provided me with immense gifts right. and there were wonderful moments that were shared and i can honor them without having to be connected to them on this physical plane right and and i think that's what this is all about is can we honor the sacredness of life and all the connections that we've had mm-hmm. um so anyway that's a long-winded way of saying these these types of uh, honoring our ancestors and our loved ones who have passed really color these, um, these holidays Mm -hmm. so much more richly for me. Yeah. You know, it's not just about, Ooh, ghost stories and let's get, get a candy rush and go out to, you know, and dress up. It's more than that. It is honoring, you know, the, the wonderful, uh, what do I want to say? The, the, I mean, life is this cacophony, this symphony of so many things. I mean, how can you, I I don't know, how can you not believe in some higher power or divinity when there is 40 million types of birds in all different colors, 40 million different types of people, all different colors, races, spiritual traditions. I mean, it just, when we recognize that we're connected and we can honor our ancestors and the sacredness of our history. And, you know, we just, we just live more sacredly. I believe we walk as if we are walking on holy ground because we are, our ancestors have walked this ground before Mm -hmm. there used to be, um, I know we're, we're getting close to time. We could talk about this all night, but, um, you know, want to just briefly say that there's, um, uh, there's been this movement of honoring the land in mm-hmm. which you are working and living and have your home and, and this kind of thing. And by what I mean by that is honoring the ancestors, the peoples that were on this land before us. Right. And so it's been interesting. I've been to some meetings and some workshops where we're in, you know, some fancy hotel or we're even online or whatever. And we take a moment before we even get started to honor the peoples that lived here before us. And there's a map you can go online and you can search who were the native peoples that lived on this land before you got here. And just to do a little centering prayer to honor them for the sacrifices that they made for us to be here, you know, for, for the peoples that we are for better, for worse, we are intertwined with. Mm-hmm. Um, because of where we are right now and it's such it just really it, it's that there's the gap that's the sacred gap of oh, I'm just in this present moment being mindful about the expansiveness of the energetic connection that we all have with the living and the dead yeah I agree I uh as as we kind of wrap it up I just want to say to people um as they're going out into the Halloween, Samhain, yeah. Dia de los Muertos, yes. uh, All Saints Day, 
all of these things. Uh, I would, I just want everyone to remember that Angie made a really terrific point. And that is that um, our eyes see Mm -hmm. sometimes things that aren't there, or we imagine uh, spooky. I can say that, so I, I have said this before that I often have dreams where people Mm -hmm. will come back and visit me. We'll have full conversations. It's lovely. Um, And it never scares me ever. I have never had someone come back to me and have a conversation with me where I was in any way afraid. Um, So uh, as you're out there, things can scare you and things may be spooky and creepy and they may be heavy. Um, That doesn't necessarily mean that it is it's not bad. It just maybe is not hurt you. Yeah. It's not an energy that you are ready for at this juncture. Um, and it's okay to have fun and be playful. Uh, and also, um, remember the, to honor, uh, because I think that this is one of my favorite seasons for that reason. I love the honoring of like Christmas is amazing. Like, yeah, family and trees but I literally this is the time of year where we get to honor people who aren't in this physical life with me anymore and that is my favorite thing is just yes husband yeah and and speaking of that uh, again we're going to continue to talk for just a little bit longer so um so you weren't in the moon circle uh last month and so what was interesting is we did talk about since it's October we talked about being able to, you know, mediumship skills and being able to speak to and and connect to those who have passed or transitioned. And what was fabulous, I mean, I did a reading and it was great, got to read and and, um, connected many of the people in there with with a a loved one that had passed. Um, But we did an exercise because I wanted to show them how easy it could be, you know, because there's this belief that, well, I can't do that, right? And that's not true. So we did this exercise. And so the first thing is, is that when you think it's your imagination and you're making it up, Mm -hmm. that's generally when you're getting a a good solid hit, right? Because it's the first thing that comes to you um, when we're, when we're doing a reading. And so um, it it sounds weird. Like you think you're making it up, but you're not you're only thinking that you're making it up because you're just like, this is a new experience. I don't know what's happening. I'm just, you know, bringing in somebody um, and this is who I'm seeing in my mind's eye. And this is, I'm describing them, et cetera. Right. But if you go with, if you get out of your mind and you, you think of it, you don't think about it. You just go with the first thing that comes to you. um, Oftentimes you'll, you'll find somebody that you, Oh, I guess Laura left the room and then got got out. Oh, that's why she's somehow you 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 lost us, did you? She's connecting to audio. <clears throat> and I know she wanted to come back in because she's desperate to hear the story. <laughs> Everything went blank. Like all okay. of my just went out. I'm like, what oh. happened? Oh, that's well, because you know, right you're, you're surrounded. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I was talking about this, um, this experience uh, where I was going to have them do a, um, an exercise to connect with their own mediumship skills. And they're like, okay, whatever. And I'm like, so here's what we're going to do. We did a guided meditation where I, I prompted them to uh, you know, create a room for yourself, a beautiful room where you can receive guests. You're sitting in a beautiful chair. Think about what the chair looks like really in your mind's eye, create this room, there's a chair in front of you that's empty. And so, you know, we just, we just did that as a beautiful meditation. And then I partnered them up and said, okay, so you're going to sit there for just a half a second. And you're going to think to yourself, here's, you're going to visualize that chair in front of you. Who's in the chair, describe them. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, the first thing that comes into your mind Who's in that chair? If you think you're making it up, it's your imagination. Imagination is not, yes, we create with that, but oftentimes the imagination, that is the, that is the psychic power. And so, so what was so cool is these are people who are on their, just starting their journeys. 
And they're just kind of like playing with it. And I said, don't worry about whether you get it right or not. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But just think about who's in the chair visiting, describe everything about them, how they look, their personality, what symbols are you getting, et cetera. And so this one woman uh, got partnered with me because we had an odd number. And um, I was, you know, as most people who get partnered with me, I'm going to push you. You know, so she was stalling and she's like, okay, who am I seeing? And went, well, I think it's a woman. Okay. And she was just trying to get specific things. And I would just start firing off questions. Just answer the question as quickly as possible. She said, okay, so I've got this uh, uh, older woman. She's got gray hair. She's wearing glasses. She's wearing this flowery dress. Um, you know, I get that it's kind of a grandmother. That's the feeling I get. I see pies. I don't know why, but lots and lots of pies. And uh, she said a few other things, but um, that were right on. And I said, you connected to my grandmother. You described my grandmother perfectly. She worked for Westinghouse and baked pies for Westinghouse. And she was just shocked. She was just like, what? And I was like, when you play, when you play and you set the intention that I want to have a joyful connection with the spirit world, they will communicate with you. It's amazing. So, just be open, just be open. So I invite people to, um, if there's someone on your heart that you've lost, that you want to have a connection with, go into meditation, see yourself in a beautiful room, one of your favorite rooms, sitting in your favorite chair, and invite them to come sit with you in that chair and have a conversation. Write it down in your journal, say your conversation out loud, and then whatever comes into your head as a response, let, let yourself know that that is a response. Okay. And you'll know that it's true because you don't have to think about it. Right. It just is there. It's just there. I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me where it's like, I'm, I think they're not listening and I'm, you know, spouting off something. I wish I blah, blah, blah. And I need the da, da, da. And then I immediately hear in my mind's eye or my, in my brain, the answer. And, and I just, and I go, okay, yeah, I know you're right. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like, it's just, you just know, you will know it when you, and the more you practice it, the more you connect to it. So, um, so with that, my dear, I think we should wrap it up and let people get on with honoring their ancestors, honor yourself and have a beautiful Samhain, All Souls Day, Dia de los Muertos, uh, all of those uh, sacred holidays, honor your ancestors because they are with you. They love you. They're here to help you. They're here to help you live so that you can die beautifully. Um, and thank you always, uh, Miss Laura, for such a great conversation. Always love it. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll get this posted as soon as we can. And then we'll talk in the next couple of weeks. We've got a couple of other topics we're going to cover. We're going to talk about empathy. Uh, we're going to talk about being empathic, uh, the grief, the feelings of the feelings and why, what, what it means to be on, you know, feeling how we feel when people grieve. And there's so many different feelings and how we can become OK with that. Um, and then we're also going to talk about health care directives. We're going to dive deeper into that because we had a meeting at my house where we helped each other put together our health care directives. And who knew that one little form would be so vitally important. And uh, yeah, so we're going to, we got some great topics coming up. So thank you for joining us. Oh, for dying out loud. And uh, we'll see you next time on the other side.